Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're taking a look at quite the neat little orchid. I've been dying to see this one in bloom and she has been on my wish list for quite a long time. This is a hybrid, it's a primary hybrid between Sideria japonica and Vandopsis perishi. Now we all know the Sideria japonica, I have her in my collection for whatever reason, it did not bloom this year either. But she is doing okay and I had her in bloom. It's a beautiful mini orchid with a beautiful scent and the Vandopsis perishi, well it's not a cross between a Vanda and a Phalaenopsis, although name-wise that's what it suggests. It is actually a species of its own. It is a monopodial just like the Sideria and apparently they are compatible and somebody made a hybrid between them. So this doesn't necessarily have a name. I purchased it as Vandopsis perishi cross with Sideria japonica but you can find it on some websites as Vandopurea little one. Now there's a problem with the name. All of these orchids have been recently reclassified because that's how we roll. The Sideria japonica is now Phalaenopsis japonica, although yours truly has some issues with that and just for ease of understanding each other, I'm still going to call her Sideria. While the Vandopsis is reclassified to something that I don't remember right now, but I will research and post it on the screen. So the name Vandopurea is not correct technically anymore, so I'm not sure how to call this orchid. Let's just call her by her old name and as a cross. So let's take a closer look at the flowers and see if we can see anything from her parents. Now the Sideria japonica looks a little bit like a Phalaenopsis, like a species, in the sense that it has that shape, the butterfly shape that the Phalaenopsis usually have, but the petals and the sepals are elongated. Also it has a creamy color and a few lines, burgundy lines. While the lip is the main focus of that flower, it has some purpleness to it. I sadly don't own the Vandopsis perishi, but I can certainly google it. The Vandopsis perishi appears to have a greenish yellowish background with burgundy dots and a purplish lip. And what do you know, our little one looks exactly like it's a cross between those two, doesn't it? So we have the shape of the Sideria japonica, the Vandopsis perishi is more rounded than this, we also have the pulled forward type of bloom of the Sideria japonica, we have the lip and we actually have the coloration and background and spotting of the Vandopsis perishi. If you look on the internet you will find great variety with this one um, and I'm not entirely sure which one I like best but this is really pretty as well, it looks so wild, I love spotted flowers and I'm really happy that mine took more from the Vandopsis parent. As for the plant itself, well it looks exactly like a Sideria, just a little bit bigger. Although Sidereas, when they're mature enough, they can be quite big as well, so I would say it kind of looks almost identical to a Sideria japonica, but it can certainly look like a mini Phalaenopsis or even a medium one. My orchid has two flower spikes, this orchid can produce multiple spikes, and if it takes after the Sideria parent, she will bloom only once a year. Which is a pity, but it's okay. It means we need to enjoy the blooms when they happen. Now yes, the blooms are pretty and wild, but the best thing about them is the fragrance. And yes, the Sideria is one of my favorite fragrances. It's very yummy, fruity, citrusy, lemony like, like a lemon pie. This one, it does not smell like that. It might have picked the fragrance of the Vandopsis perishi, but it absolutely does not smell like the Sideria. It smells like heavy, wonderful, full of flavor honey. If you think the Berryota or the Kingianum smells like honey, you're wrong. Now that I have them side by side pretty much to compare them, the Kingianum smells like jasmine more and it reminds you of honey. This is pure honey, it smells like you have a jar of honey opened in front of your nose. Now when you smell this orchid you would not say the fragrance is very powerful, however my greenhouse smells like this orchid entirely. When I come in the greenhouse I smell this beautiful honey scent and I'm wondering, okay is this one the one that smells or it's a different orchid somewhere near because it appears to be everywhere and it's super strong, but if you stuck your nose into the flower you wouldn't tell with this orchid. There is just that aroma that lingers in the air and I absolutely love it because I love honey. It's absolutely wonderful and I'm happy because it's different than the Sideria, which I have and it just makes me curious about the Vandopsis perishi. 
And now for a few care tips, it's not gonna be long. I treat her exactly like a Phalaenopsis, but I keep her in brighter light. Not cat layout or anything, but definitely on Cidium light. Other than that, if you've ever grown a Phalaenopsis, I think you will do great with this one as well. Intermediate temperatures, although she is very tolerant to high temperatures and low temperatures alike. I've never had issues with her, the roots are very vigorous, and overall she is a vigorous grower. So if you've ever grown Phalaenopsis or other orchids in your home and you don't have issues, this one, there's nothing really worth mentioning in this regard. She's just like the others, and she will do very well mounted or potted in organic meat medium or inorganic as you can see I keep her in semi hydroponics and she's doing perfectly fine she's a massive root producer though that's normal that's okay and one thing to mention I ordered this one last year and it spent a month and a half on transport for whatever reason I was scared but she survived without even batting an eyelash so she's very very drought tolerant although as you can see does very well in semi hydroponics as well so overall, a very non-finicky orchid, as long as you provide a little bit of a brighter light than Phalaenopsis, and then water it exactly, exactly like a Phalaenopsis orchid. And furthermore, if you've ever grown Cedarias, then uh, you should have no issues with this one. It takes a lot after the Cedaria. So this has been the Vandopsis parishi crossed with the Cideria japonica or the Vandopurea little one, however you want to call it, um, whatever you'll call it, it's wrong because it has been reclassified. But anyway, all of the names are synonyms still. So if you ever see this one for sale, I definitely would go for it. She's not finicky. She's not a dormancy plant, not a rest plant, not one that needs lower temperatures or anything. She's not at all a finicky plant in my opinion. And I think you can grow her in intermediate to bright shade light conditions. You should find her for sale in specialized nurseries online and on location and it really shouldn't be all that expensive. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this and you know the drill. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!